useful minds that are working around the issues so that they can use the issues that is breaking down into the most the most simple like real way so that our people can understand the government is like able to take up her own uh, responsibility issue in, to ensure implementation. So discussion that's gonna be heard here the two days is basically gonna be human rights, human rights, human rights. So um, let me just use this opportunity to uh, again say that we are about to open this meeting, the two days meeting. And uh, among us, there are key stakeholders. And of course, from the government, from the UN, and from civil society. And of course, we look forward to seeing more people coming. The US ambassador told me that they were going to come. But up to now, I've not seen Thomas. The Independent National Commission on Human Rights should be here. And we look up to seeing them maybe before the day ends, even up to tomorrow. So if you can just briefly, those who are using glasses, just look at the agenda. Those of you who have strong eyes and mind, you don't have to use glasses. Please just look at the official program. But in the city of Kakata, uh, if we have a representative from Kakata here, you will stand up small since I'm living outside of Kakata and just welcome us. When the official government will come, and of course, we'll take the opportunity to count the authority to say something to us. Hello, Bakakata. Maggie Rao. Yes. Uh, Maggie Rao. Maggie Rao. Uh, Maggie Rao. Uh, yes. Uh, how you can see the basso, the fair, the view, the everything. Yes, it's okay. Just it's okay. Yes. 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 Oh, we have one. My Divi Kante. Call your name, please. I'm Sele S. Momo from Pressing Fellowship, Nigeria. On behalf of my Divi Kante, we say we are welcome. Welcome and feel free. He is the director for the Human Rights Division, Ministry of Justice, Republic of Liberia. Director, mm -hmm. welcome, sir. Thank you. So for those of you who don't know him, you can get to him. Hey, I like you so you hope we're working in common. I ever seen talk one time to you now. Yeah, Daniel. Nevin Nyawe. He comes from the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights in Liberia. So the banner you see here, that's the symbol. So we can get used to it. So in the project, the program we run, they are the sole sponsor for this program. And besides that, they are the eyes for human rights at the UN in Liberia. So all the human rights basically we discuss in Liberia, and the office is also doing a case. So later on, he will be joined by his chief. He will talk about it. But I just want you to please not put a hand clap, but the normal hand clap. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm actually overwhelmed because of the representatives I see here. And I see it as a strong sense of civil society unity and I think um, this is a very good platform from which we can expect to see some results because as our constitution as our national anthem saying the union strong success is sure I hope that this uh, conglomeration will pull together and support 
the protection and promotion of human rights in Liberia. We know that um, because of our partnership, some good things are coming up. For the first time after we had our training in um, the Kano City on Treaty Reporting, we have seen the first um, or the second delegation to Geneva on human rights. And it's important because civil society has a role to provide information that either supports government reports or provide more information that will help the committees reviewing these reports to make determination what is the actual human rights situation, situation on the ground. And like I always appreciate the head of the human rights uh, protection platform when he says that the role of the civil society is not to antagonize the government but to provide the information that will help the government to perform its duty. The government is a duty bearer, meaning that we have the duty and the mandate to ensure that the rights of all persons in the territory of our country is protected. And um, I'm sure going forward, this partnership will continue to yield more. Because even as we speak, we have other reports that are coming up. We'll also be working with the um, organizations on the rights of persons with disabilities. Because for the first time again, I draw this our first report to the committee uh, monitoring the implementation of the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. I'm sure I saw um, um, Alan, Richard, uh, uh, Russell? Alan, Russell Allen, he can stay away so long I forget his, his name sometimes. <laughs> uh, but, but, but they play a major role also because we'll also be looking at uh, our first report on the Convention Against Torture. So civil society, we can always tap into the immense wealth of information that you have in uh, drafting our reports. So at this time, I want to say thank you for accepting me in your midst, and I want to wish you a successful deliberation. Thank you. I uh, own your human rights protection service and also build on issues that will lead to sustainability of peace in Liberia. Our interest in Liberia for now is based on four pillars. We are working on the issue of mechanism, on the issue of participation, on the issue of accountability, on the issue of discrimination. Our fifth area is actually the area that has to do with migrant and also forced disappearance. Fortunately for Liberia, it is not high on the radar in Liberia. So that issue, the office in Liberia is not actually focused on that issue for now. But that is the fifth pillow of the office. That is the pillow we work on in Liberia. Now, why are we supporting these initiatives? Uh, our interest is to ensure that civil society participate in decision making, participate in developmental agenda, participate in the political sphere. We want all hands on deck. That is why we are here. We are here to ensure that the gains made so far is capitalized, is sustained, and not to divide us. Now, we come to this gathering today. My presence in this gathering and lack of, lack of our support for this gathering is to ensure that civil society understand this document. This is not the first recommendation that has been submitted to Nigeria. There are several other recommendations. We have recommendations from the UPR. Many of us around this table have not seen the UPR recommendation. There were recommendations also when Labrador sent her first report. There are recommendations also from the regions, but we don't look at these recommendations. All we do is to politicize these recommendations. But what civil society should do, and what I believe will be done after these two days, is to dissect this recommendation. Everyone all around the streets of Morovia are looking at this recommendation purely from the perspective of war crimes. It's no secret. Unfortunately, there are about 26 recommendations. And every single recommendation is as important as the war crime. And so if we only cry wolf on the war crime, like the issue of the TRC, it's probably that somebody who's not interested at the level of the government will tell that they're back to the entire document. 
when there are other beautiful issues mentioned in the document that we could achieve, why at the same time we are advocating for other issues? But we can only do it when a different civil society group take your peace. If you are in a rule of law, you advocate for the issue of rule of law. You are in the area of child protection, you advocate for the issue of child protection. You are in the in the area of marginalization, you advocate for the marginalized uh, population. You are in the issue of, of land, you advocate for, for land issue. Because all of them are in this recommendation. The issue of land is serious in Liberia. The, the United Nations have offered us a platform to solve that issue of, of the land confusion we have. The issue of business and human rights is mentioned in the document. The issue of discrimination is mentioned in the document. The issue of overcrowdedness is mentioned in the document. But all our focus is on war crimes. And so we are hoping that at the close of this gathering, by tomorrow, when we receive the recommendation from this gathering, we will see that everyone around this table has taken his or her share of the pie and begin to run with it. So that if there's a confusion concerning the issue of overcrowding as prison, we will be developing our education system because that issue of education also mentioned. When there are confusion around the issue of child protection, we'll be developing our land and laws that is on the book to ensure that there is no confusion, boundary harmonization will be settled. They also bring the issue of our, 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 our laws. We have two laws. They say we should harmonize our laws. And many people are not seeing it. It's also a, a, a national issue in Liberia. How do we bring our customary law with our statutory laws? Those are issues that we should be discussing around this table today. And so the message from my office is that let's not use this gathering for a political theater. Let's not use this gathering for the issue of antagonizing or attacking personalities within our government structures. What we want is a holistic society addressing issues of human rights that will be a conduit for sustainable peace in our country. So I ask you, I urge you to open your minds, open the document, that's why we printed the document, look from 1 to 26, as we will discuss from now to tomorrow. Every item will be discussed. Do not come with a preconceived mind that you came to attack a particular group of people or a particular sector of our society. We want to say um, we highly appreciate the support that you are giving to the Human Rights Platform. Uh, we are quite encouraged with your uh, uh, standing by us, you know, to fight this fight. Uh, on behalf of the the platform, which of course you already heard Adam speaking of the leadership, we are very much uh, gratified with your presence. Uh, this consultation uh, workshop, I think, is a good start for all of us. Um, many have already spoken, uh, especially about issues of concern. Um, the platform, uh, we think, have come just about the right time, and. Why do I say that? There are too many things that have unfolded in the past and are still unfolding in our country, especially the issue of human rights. And human rights is quite broad. So maybe uh, if you look at the recommendations, uh, it captured 26 issues. These are all uh, human rights issues. So um, on behalf of the platform, we want to say while we are here, let's dive into the issues. Let's See how we can do a constructive engagement with state party or the government to be able to address these issues. So as the civil society consultation on the United Nations Human Rights Committee concluding observation on Liberia. And uh, the concluding observation on Liberia basically highlight for the six human rights, core human rights issues recommended by the United Nations Human Rights Committee to be implemented by the government of Liberia. And uh, within its capacity to commit itself to the treaty reporting obligation, all other human rights issues that Liberia has signed onto, they are to do everything to ensure that the protection of human rights within the borders of Liberia are fully ensured. But then again, Within the treaty reporting obligation, civil society and the human rights community do have a responsibility. And the responsibility that civil society has is to follow up. That is, you monitor the day-to-day -day implementation happenings of human rights situation in Liberia, and then you produce a report. And that report at the level of the United Nations is referred to as a shallow report. 
a civil society shadow report is normally written by civil society groupings on the status of human rights within the country. So while Liberia was in the process of developing her initial report to be submitted to the United Nations, it also drew civil society, the human rights community, into the working arena. So they were on an obligation to also write a civil society shadow report. So in January of this year, 2018, the civil society platform with support from the Center for Civil and Political Rights based in Geneva, drafted, finalized, and submitted a 39 page report to the United Nations Human Rights Committee in Geneva. And that submission was done in March 2018. A follow up to that report was also made July, between July 9 and July 10 in Geneva with a half hour delegation from civil society and then advocated with the Human Rights Committee to ensure that the committee come up with recommendations that will benefit Liberia, that will improve the human rights situation in Liberia. So successfully, our advocacy, the follow up, yielded a great result. So the report that we are going to be discussing, the concluding observation, it came about as a, as, a, as, a, as a result of civil society engagement, constructive engagement with the UN. So I'm proud to inform you as head of that delegation to Geneva that we succeeded in making sure that the United Nations gave attention to Liberia and human rights situation in Liberia. So the strong report that have come up today as a UN recommendation come directly to the, to the government of Liberia to implement. But mind you, the role of civil society in the human rights community is also captured in the governance process of this country. That is the governance process has civil society play an independent role, but also to support government to operate in the right framework. And mind you, your operations, your work should not be subjected while we agree that we are a critical partner of the government, we are indeed a very much independent society that do not compromise on issues. So henceforth, to implement the, the list of issues captured in the UN observation, your role now as civil society is to follow up. And the UN is looking up to us to also report during the next review that is between two years, now to 2020, the government of Liberia should implement a certain list of issues. And if the government is not implementing those list of issues, you gotta take track, you gotta, you, you gotta be able to track the progress of those reports. If the government is on war, of course, we will not see the truth and then compromise and try to give a different scenario. But if indeed it is not happening, you are also on record to report. And your report should be based on facts and truth account. We do not want to run a civil society that will operate or report on secondary source. We want to operate on first-hand source. So in human rights, to be able to highlight human rights issues should not be assumption, but it should be direct and of course fact-based. So I want to charge us today, during the two days, to, to elevate ourselves. I want to charge us to raise the eternal on human rights reporting. That is going to be more stronger than ever before. You go why? You have gone and shown yourself to the United Nations and the international community that you are a trust partner that they can work with. So in doing so, you got to keep that responsibility. You got to keep that promise that in the two years time, while the government will be reporting, you yourself should be ready to be reporting. So that's going to help Liberia to move in a better way. So, as we discussed in the two days, you will go through the list of issues, 26. And those 26 issues, the organization are working on different thematic issues. We want it to be thematic because when you do the spiral star, you'll be pulled from other, either side and you will not be able to make any impact because you want to be in every part and that unnecessarily you may not be able to deliver on note. So we want you to keep to where you have strength. 
where you think you got strength to work and captured a you know, basic uh, program uh, implementation. Then of course, other who are working on other issues can also do the same. At the end of now, in two years time, we should not be looking for a window where to find report. But we should call you in this clean kind of room, not a hidden one like this, but in a room that is going to be more comfortable to give us real, real account of what you've done in two years. So we want to, we want to again, put you in a better position. You don't have to be struggling to look for issues. But the issues are here, you just need to follow what the UN has said, and then do your checklist, do the monitoring. So when we have, we have the time to write our next report, we're not going to bring new people to write our report. We will call you, you start giving us information based on the list of issues. So the essence of the consultation is to get you glued to your area of focus. And even if you have the strength, you still want to modify, we can still allow it to you. But we don't want to struggle. Like my colleague uh, Topa said, the treaty reporting obligations is not only with government, but at the level of civil society, we made significant progress. So we want to make sure that we get more stronger than what we have done. For in this regard, I think the situation in Liberia will change. And the situation will change to a better, where a human rights group will be respected more and more. This is a time that you've got to allow human rights group to be respected, and you can only be respected based on the true account of your work. We do not want people to come here to pretend around the issues on the issues. We do not want an ugly image of this country to go out there and, you know, based on your own you know, interest. We want this thing to be issues that we go after. In human rights, when you start becoming interest-based, then of course you compromise. Then of course you start taking side. So we don't want to encourage civil society now to become uh, 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 what do you call it, Gongo, government NGO. You say you're a non-government organization, you remain as a non-governmental organization. So again, the ball is before you. Together we can make greater progress. Together we can move this entire process. And I can tell you that the government respects us now. Because in Geneva, they saw the level of work we did. And the government knows now there's a stronger civil society institution that is following the day-to-day -day happenings in this country. So you got to come up strong. We got to work together. We know sometimes things are project driven, but there are some error that we got our project, direct project, you need to come up strong. So the two days, we will have the opportunity to school you into the list of issues. And then where you don't have understanding, we also will be able to do a follow-up training like this to get you familiar with the issues. But be reminded that the civil society platform have become more visible. And at the level of the international community, we have been uh, spotted and already placed to be an institution that is a serious one that the UN and all international partners are going to be working with in the period of the two years. So I don't want to let you down, and I don't want you to let me down. We've got our work to do, and we've got to do it together. So kindly allow us to interact. The government will also give us a highlight of their own participation and how they went about the whole process, and you can learn from them. And let us help the government too, because they do have limitations in some ways. But remind, be reminded that independent you are. Independent you are, and independent we are. So let us be very much in the strict on the record. There are issues that we will not compromise, and there are issues that we we'll stick onto. So again, let us take the issues and make sure that you be able to communicate and communicate right. Well, so uh, like, uh, let me begin by again uh, extending thanks to all of you. Uh, for again showing up to this consultation uh, is very very important uh, because in the past uh, Liberia and West Africa so to speak is noted of not being strong into civil society advocacy. Other countries where civil society speaks the government I mean hears the voice of civil society organizations. So uh, and that's why they said it's quite timely because at the moment the civil society organization is now becoming stronger. So why do we have to go to Geneva? First, as you may know, 
in March, I mean in January of this year, we had the opportunity to interact with uh, ICCPR when they wanted to do civil society consultations. And that was the first time that they had to come to Liberia. So through our office, President Fellowship, we engaged them. And uh, so we thought that we could not do it alone as President Fellowship level. So we decided to turn, over, I mean, turn the whole issue to the platform. Because the platform is a bigger body and bigger than President Fellowship of Liberia. So you had a representative for ICCPR, uh, two persons coming down to Liberia in January. And then we had a two days consultation where uh, they guided us in writing the shadow reports. Uh, it was a hectic time as well uh, at the Carina Hotel. So we went through the process, guiding where state uh, government were fully represented. I had to search out government Minister of justice were there as well. And so the guiding principles were given. And um, so they left. When they went back, now they sent us this huge document that talks about Liberia human rights issues. And they wanted us to respond to some of those very issues. So back and forth, we did a couple of exchanges, and uh, finally the draft was made available, and then the final document was made available, which, uh, which were the shadow reports. So we submitted the shadow reports, and it took the hair away. It, it became so interested in the UN setting. Of all of the UN partners, I became so interested in Liberia's report, the shadow reports, uh, so it's like shadow reports. So, uh, there was communication, engagement as to how we can go about with this uh, constructive engagement with governments. And then uh, there was invitations submitted to us that we needed to send two, three persons to represent Liberia on the civil society uh, angle. So it was when um, Adam, uh, the narrator, myself, and then other colleagues came from other, uh, other CSOs. Uh, represented went to Geneva. We spent like uh, four days, um, three days, officially three days in Geneva, of course, we more than that. And uh, on the night in particular was when the review on Liberia was uh, was beheaded. At that review, you have all of the human rights organizations around the world present, and then you have the human rights committees present. And uh, you had the city government from Geneva, all of them present. Um, in fact, at exactly at 9 o'clock prompt, Liberia took the stage, where we make our presentations, uh, key recommendations that we highlighted, we call it reviewed. And uh, Adam was very good at that. And then the uh, presentation was made, and the questions came from the floor. Uh, it were huge questions that people brought up on some of the very key issues we will be discussing today. Um, and then we were able to answer some of those very key issues. Uh, just to close, the others will speak about others. Um, so when we spoke, when we did presentations, a lot of questions were coming out. Then we had another section uh, where they called the engagements. So they engage with a group now, and those very report, those recommendations, or the, within the report will be highlighted. And then we will, it will be discussed back and forth with a very high committee and the representative and all the human rights groups again engaging the, um, the civil society for Liberia. Uh, but let me just tell you one of the good things that uh, we did while we were in Geneva. Because we knew that government was coming. And we knew that government was going to make their presentations. For some of all, we have not read the government's response to the report. So what we did, we did an individual engagement for the, for the very committee. So the UN High Committee, we decided to engage them on one-on-one. -on -one. We met with them in their, in their appropriate time, and we discussed some of these very issues. And so it became so much interesting because we raised the awareness in the, in the conference. As we engage them one on one, their awareness will be raised more so that they got interested into Liberia than any other country. 
And then when the government came out to do the presentations, they already had, you know, uh, things on their hand. So I want to stop here for now uh, to tell you those are some of the things that we did. And uh, it, was, it was very um, timely that we weren't.